So this episode, I am dedicating to y'all the fans. So every episode that I make, I always ask y'all to ask me either questions or things that you might all need help with. So I gathered a few of the questions that have been that have been submitted. And this episode is going to be all about answering. This one is just for you. So without further ado, here we go. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Solutions Podcast. As always, I am your host, Ramsey. So as I mentioned in the intro, a couple of y'all have been actually submitting questions, and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please continue to do so. And why? Because it, it keeps things interesting, right? If y'all submitting stuff, and I'm, it's like I'm actually talking to you because I am. So I want to begin with question number one that was submitted. This was submitted by, just I am using my phone. This was submitted by Hamza Kula, and this is his story. It says, hello, I need advice on this little matter. There is a girl. She is my course mate. We first got connected via LinkedIn. Then after a few days of formal chatting, I asked her number, which she gave me. In short, we have a snap streak of 200 and we do phone calls and talk about everything. Now, maybe I'm aging myself, but I don't know what a snap, tri- a snap streak means. But hey, we'll take it. Let's see. We laugh, we flirt together, and we share quite a lot of details about, about each other's lives. But today, she refused to meet me in person. She says it's important that we meet. That it, she says it's not important that we meet everyone that is connected online. She says she doesn't want to meet like this to no one. She is a modest and religious girl too. Should I end contact or what else can you suggest to me? Thanks a lot. Well, I don't necessarily think you should end contact if your intent is not to have a relationship. If your intent is just to have a friendship, just continue talking why not but if your intent is to have a relationship of course that has to do with meeting but it does not sound like this person is interested and there's no need to further along your pain and not no need to further along her pain in order to continue talking so if you're if your intent is to have a relationship i would 100 percent tell you to end it and end the conversation because there's no need to hold on to something that is not going to happen. Now, if you just want to be a friend, want to have a friend, hey, go ahead, continue talking, but just know that that's where it's going to stay and do not force the issue and do not bring the issue any any other time. So that's my advice for that one, but thank you for the question. Question number two comes from a Richard Scott. It says, how much is too much of pushing past the line? When my woman is pushing my boundaries too much well (sighs) question is is she aware that she's pushing those lines have you made those lines clear and have you made it clear what happens if she continues to push those boundaries if you have not made it clear She's going to continue doing it. Anybody's going to continue doing it. It's it's like people are like children. Like we never actually grow up. So if you don't get fully told, hey, you cannot do this or you cannot do that, people are going to continue doing it. So first thing is first is work on your communication. Let them know, hey, this is not okay. If this action continues, this is what I'm going to do. Now, Without much detail, what's actually happening is really hard to give more advice in this one. But it's it's just that simple. Like the the world is too big to be hung up on one person, especially if they're being purposeful or purposefully disrespectful. If they're being disrespectful and they're crossing lines that they know they should not cross, and when you bring it up, they just seem nonchalant about it. Hey, I'm sorry, buddy. That relationship is over. 
And th- those are some harsh things to hear, but that relationship is over. If they're purposely crossing those lines and when you talk to them about it, they're not even apologetic, not even the least bit. Sorry, bro. But my advice would be to clearly communicate what is expected out of this relationship from your end. And maybe she'll come back and let you know what is expected from her end. And y'all realize, hey, y'all have more com- more in common. Or you realize y'all don't have enough in common to per- continue pursuing this. So that's my advice on that. Next question. Ooh, I like this one. Next question is, what new habits or mindset will you be cultivating in 2024? Well... As far as habit goes, um, that's tough. That, that That's de- definitely a tough one because I feel I have very good habits. I, I don't feel I have anything that really slows me down. But I, I guess I would say proc- procrastination. That's one thing that I definitely want to stop. Like when I feel like I want to do something, I have to do it right off the bat. I got to stop saying, oh, I'm going to put it off for the next day. And I know that I give advice on not doing that. So that's why like, I got to practice what I preach. So that's probably one habit that I'm going to definitely be kicking back on which is not doing exactly what I say I want to do and most people that know me if I say I'm going to do something I will do it it's going to happen it's not if it's when but now that I'm getting a little bit older and going on with my life and starting to build multiple different streams of of hobbies let's just say like this is exactly is um i'm just going to stop procrastinating and going to start going hard off the back it's like okay i want to do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna set a timeline i'm going to make sure that nothing is going to stand in the way from achieving that goal now let me get to the second part of this question is what mindset what mindset matt oh what mindset will you cultivate in 2024 it's just getting after it it's just going a little bit harder because with with age and uh, a couple like aches and bruises and pains i i just find myself pacing myself but find myself pacing myself at a slower pace than what i used to and and that's not okay because there's been many years that i have been telling myself hey i'm going to achieve this two mile time one mile time i'm going to achieve all this And then another year goes by and I got close, but I didn't make it. So one thing that I do want to do is turn up my pace again. When I was younger, I remember when I used to do fighting that like one thing that would throw people off would be my pace. I'll just keep going and going and going and going. And I feel that I kind of stepped away from that. And I wish that I had that back. So one thing that I'm going to be doing in 2024, I'm just going to be sprinting a lot more. In more ways than just running. I'm going to be sprinting with my mind, with my body, with my soul. I'm going to be going hard and waking up those people around me that forgot who I was. That's what I'm going to be doing in 2024. Good question, though. Okay, so this question from Grant Williams is, what did you get for Christmas? Well, as I've mentioned on the show, I am currently overseas, so I didn't really get much. I did get a care package with a couple of... um, like soap and stuff, which is awesome because I really needed it because we were kind of running out of stuff at the PX. So that that was awesome. But one thing that I did get that was wonderful is the new edition of the 48 Laws of Power. And everybody that I talk to always tell them that book is my Bible. I have literally read it three times and I actually, to go to sleep, I play it on YouTube. I actually play it on YouTube. And I have it, like, how can I say it? Like, I have, like, just the snippets of the 48 laws, like, just the what the law is and a brief description of it on repeat when I go to sleep because I believe and stand by that book so, so much. So Robert Greene did a limited edition, and my, my great partner in crime did me the favor and hooked it up. It's a very nice book. I think I, I, I obviously I, ha- I don't have it in person. It's still back there. There's no point in sending it back because I'm going to go back eventually. So, but it's black book, gold letters, gold trim. It's a beautiful piece of art. So that's what that's one of the coolest things that I got for 2024, which is awesome. And if y'all have not got the opportunity, 
read that book. It is amazing. The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. You're not going to regret it. Trust me. You're not going to regret it. If you listen to me, you're going to love that book. Trust me. So this message comes from a Clinton, Clinton Finch. Finch? Okay. So the question is, I got a Kindle for Christmas. Looking for good book recommendations. I really enjoyed David Goggins' books. Extreme Ownership. Atomic Habits. Looking for more books around those lines. So... David Goggins, both of, both of his books are great. If you have not had an opportunity to check them out, check them out. One is Can't Hurt Me, and the other one is Never Finished. So do yourself that favor and check out those books. Those books are, are, are great. Even if you don't want to read it, per- personally, I feel like the audio books are a little bit better for those two because what he does is that he goes on his, how can I say that? Like, he has some guy narrating for him, but... Like I don't know something about him. I I don't I don't like the guy that narrates the the book. But the good thing is that after every chapter, after every minim, uh, meaningful lesson, they do like a mini breakdown of it be, between the guy that's narrating and himself. They do a breakdown of what exactly he was talking about. Sorry, what exactly he was talking about. And it's awesome. It it, it um both both of them both of them have the same the same uh blueprint, which is it's amazing. So those two. Books are good, and I'm glad that you have read them. If you have read both, if you have only read one, read the other one. Uh, the first one on my list that I would recommend, as I just mentioned, is The 48 Laws of Power. You will not regret it. Each law goes into an example, a historical example of how that law was being used by Robert Greene. Again, 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Hustle Harder. Hustle Smarter by 50 Cent. That's one of the books that I ended up finishing while I was trying to do the 75-day hard challenge. As I mentioned before, hey, I felt it is what it is. My conditions are harsher than I expected, but hey, no no excuse. As soon as I get back, I'm going to get after it. But that, that book's a very, very intriguing book. It's, it's a good way to adapt uh, modern problems and modern solutions. It's 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 a good book and and he he did a very good job at relating both with high level individuals and low level individuals like this is the book that anybody can pick up from a teenager all the way to somebody in their 40s and 50s good book definitely recommend it seven habits of highly effective people as a matter of fact that was my episode 1 that was the first book that i have read outside of school and i went through it and that book really helped me get to a better place. And that actually was the one that projected me into this self-development journey since then. Because I, I was I was a rogue kid. I was a very rogue kid. It's, it's hard to be mentored when no one around you can keep up. And I was hard. And, and, and that's not to toot my own horn. That's just the way it was. I could not find people to mentor me because I just went way too hard in the paint. And it was awesome. Well, most people thought it was awesome, but sometimes it it could have came out a little bit wrong. But I, I will say that that book, uh, Seven H- Habits of Highly Effective People, is a good one. It's not that long, too. So you could pro- that's probably a, a good one that you can actually finish up pretty fast. How to Win Friends and Influence People. So this is a very, very old book. I remember when I started reading this, I think I was in between. I, was, I think I was in, in between deployments. And... I remember like some old old white dude sitting in first class and he he saw that and he's like hey um that's a very powerful book make sure you learn from it make sure you pay attention to it I read this when I was younger and I'm telling you he was old and that helped me become where I'm at and obviously if he was sitting in first class he's probably not doing too bad for himself so that's that that's another one and last but not least is the 33 strategies of war now, most people feel that they might not need that that type of book just because they have nothing to do with the military. They have nothing to do with any things like that. But it also works as like, hey, we deal with people that wish bad on us every single day. As we said in episode 10, fish, fi- fish fly, uh, birds swim, and people suck and haters hate. There's nothing we can do about that. There's really nothing we can do about it. There's no, well, there, there is something we can do about that. And that's implement the 33 strategies of war. It talks a lot about like, hey, when, when there's, there's a line that's crossed, you, you nip that on the bud directly. 
you do not let that happen again. A lot of times that we we're just not we we don't want conflict. We we don't want conflict, and then this individual just gets away with continuing to disrespect you and your work, and that's not okay. So this book talks about ways to handle those type of people in those type of situations. Now, do not let it beat you when people act that way towards you, and that's why I, I say the the fish fly, I fish swim, birds fly, and haters hate because there's no point of getting mad at it. You know, just stay stoic with it. There's no point of getting mad at it because you cannot control them, but you can control you. You can control your actions and reactions, and you control the way that you pursue with that situation and that relationship. So those are the books I would recommend for you. Let me see. It's Yep, those are the books I would recommend for you. So please, anybody that's out there that's listening, take your time, check them out. There, there's a bundle on, I believe it's audio, uh, Audible. Audible. There's a bundle that you can get ahead, get, get six it's it's a six month process, so they they give you one credit every month, so that gives you the opportunity to actually finish one book every month and take that as a challenge. It's like okay, well, I know this next one is coming, so I might as well finish this book and finish it. Finish this book, learn a new one, learn a new one, and and six months from today, you're gonna be way smarter than what you were. Just saying. Next question is from a Tom Yellen. It says, Merry Christmas. Any tips Any tips on healing from a breakup wound and to stop pursuing women? I always struggle with this after you break up. Well, maybe you have to go back and ask yourself, why? Why are you pursuing other women? Like, why are you pursuing other people in general? Like... Have you thought and say, hey, maybe if it's not working out with multiple people, maybe you got to work on yourself. That's one. Two, you can't love someone until you love yourself. So ask, that, ask yourself that question. Do I love myself? Do I look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm, I'm good looking. I make good money. I'm strong. I'm fast. I'm confident. I love who that person is in the mirror. Do you do that? If the answer is no, focus on those things, not other people. Focus on you to be the best version of you. And trust me, along that journey, you're going to find a person that's meant to be with you. That's meant to be with the best version of you. Because it's not fair for any of us to give the worst version of us to the best version of somebody else. That's not fair. So do yourself that favor, look in the mirror and see where you can improve and start working on that. And like I said about my pro- procrastination, just stay laser focused on those attributes that you want to fix within yourself. All right, here's another one with um, more relationship issues. It's crazy, man. Just just call me Cupid. I'm I'm gonna figure this one out for you. Nah, I'm just I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm I'm not perfect at this, but if you're asking, I'm I'm gonna answer, right? So it says, I often, when talking to women, get hinged up on the fact that they're ta- they're taking a while to respond to me, and that they're online but they're not replying. I experienced significant childhood trauma. First of all, that's already a, a kind of a red flag. As a kid. Is there a link to the above and this? If so, any tips and ideas on how to stop it? First of all, I wish I knew how old you were. I don't, I don't know how old you were, but how old you are. But you you can't put your problems on other people. That That's just not fair. You cannot put your problems on other people. And if you do what I told the last person to do, which is to focus on themselves... And focus on the self-improvement. When you send a message or when you send something, you're going to be too busy to realize when they do or don't reply because you're so busy out there getting it. Do yourself that favor and go out there and get it. You know, especially if you're shooting a lot of um, a lot of messages because it sounds like it sounds like you're you're talking about in general, like when you when you when you're shooting a bunch of DMs or whatever, and maybe one caught your attention a little bit more than the others, but 
again like like if you're if you're so busy out there getting it you're not gonna worry about when they do or don't reply just go out there and do your thing man just go out there and do your thing and when they reply they do and when they don't you move on to the next that 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 is it and and at the same time if if you're single and they're single they they don't owe you anything nobody owes you anything if you're not actually committed to each other they don't owe you anything now if y'all become committed to each other Take some time to have that uncomfortable conversation, which is, hey, um, this is my expectations. Are these too much? And if the answer is yes, you make that determination. But at least they let you know that what you're asking for, it might be a little bit too much or vice versa. They might ask for something. They might need something. And you cannot... You know, you cannot provide it and then give them the opportunity to walk away. But if they don't walk away, at least they're armed with the knowledge now. They're armed with what's actually going to be and not be. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick break from these questions just because I'm on video. So let let me show you this awesome shirt that they had on special. Look at that. Make a rack great again. Um. So I went to, to, to the local stores and... For some reason, nobody wanted this shirt. It was like they, they had it on like a clearance. I don't know when they started developing clearance racks, but it's pretty awesome. They had it on a clearance rack for like five bucks. And yeah, I got it. Make a rack great again. Hopefully, hopefully things will get more peace in the Middle East. I don't know. Next question we got is from Matt Smith. It says, I just started my gym membership yesterday. What are some beginner tips, gym etiquette, that I should know? I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey, well, first of all, congratulations. It's always good to be bettering yourself. And welcome to the gym journey. And welcome to being a gym bro, hopefully. Hopefully you become a gym bro, right? But not a not a gym dick. Not an asshole. Just a gym bro, you know? Just one of us. So uh, let's start with the etiquette. Um, if you pick it up, you put it right back. Put your weights back. Um, that that's one of the biggest things. Most people, most people, regardless of how buff they are or how weak they are, that would be a pet peeve for almost everybody that goes to the gym. Is when people just pull out plates and they just leave them on the ground and never pick them up. Leave it for the staff, like that's their job. No, their job is to attend to the customers and to keep the area clean and sanitized and everything. But to pick up your mask, that's no, that's nobody's job but your own, right? So. That's when it comes to gym etiquette is always pick up your your weights. Second, I would say if you if if the gym still provide towels, take a towel with you just so like that doesn't when you're sweating on the machines and stuff like that, you're not leaving too much of a mess. And of course, always wipe off the equipment after you're done with it. Those are like the basic gym etiquette, the gym rules or whatever. So as far as tips, um, do yourself a favor and just Google a beginning working plan for whatever your goal is. If you're trying to get buffer, just put a beginning beginner workout plan for trying to get mass. If you're trying to get smaller, beginning workout plan for losing weight. Whatever your goal is. Just start with with a Google search and get the one that makes the most sense for your level of fitness and just keep it going. Just keep it going and just follow it to the T. The reason why, why I say this is because it, when you have no idea what you're doing, it's always good to start with a plan because all plans actually work. If they did not work, they wouldn't be created. They wouldn't be published. All plans work. You just got to finish them through. Like all diets work, you just gotta finish them through. Now, that 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 would be my advice. Is just look for beginning workout plans for whatever goal you're trying to hit, whatever target you're trying to hit, and that will get you a good beginning. Um, if you want to know the basics, one thing that you do want to do is is like for for the the basic four, right? You got your overhead press, you got your bench press, you got your deadlift. And you got your squat. It, anything else is just to make those better. You, you know what I mean? So all, all if you incorporate all that, you're going to get the whole body. So break it down. 
like that. It could work on your shoulders, your chest, your back, your legs. Those are the biggest muscle groups that you work on anyways. And those are the four core lift, the four Olympic lifts, I think, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And do workouts around those. That's one thing that I did when I first started. Is like, okay, I know those are the four lifts. So I'm going to do my my overhead press, try to build strength for that, and then work out my shoulders. Then I would do my bench press and then work out different exercises for my chest. Boom, boom, damn. Then I'll work out my my um, deadlifts and work my back and my legs to work my squats, things like that. So, And, and th- those, that's the way that I started. And then I started developing different routines. Now what I actually do is I do five sets of 12 six different exercises per muscle group now that might sound excessive but for me it works because if by doing by doing six five sets of 12 like I, i'm still lifting a good amount of weight and getting that hypertrophy per hypertrophy it's a, it's a big word all the people that go to the gym they know exactly what i'm talking about hypertrophy hypertrophy that one and and because because of my age, I'm also not trying to go off the back and lift as heavy as I can because I don't want to hurt myself. Because what's the point of going to the gym if you hurt yourself? Because now I could do the same routine and build strength over time. Or I can try to push too much weight, hurt myself, and now I got like two weeks off the gym because I'm old and things hurt. And it takes longer to recover. So, yeah. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. So, that, what I do is five sets of 12, six different exercises per muscle group okay so hopefully uh those things work and i look forward to hearing about your journey man and congrats all right and i'm, I'm gonna leave this as the last question i feel we've done enough for today but hey it's been a good episode and i appreciate it and i hope these things keep coming and we'll continue to do more q's and a's all right last one is from dharma chaya if you could have one thing for christmas that is not material or a physical thing, what would it be? Hmm. Huh. If I could have something that's not physical or material, what would it be? Hmm. I don't know. That's that, that, that's a that's a very good question. Something that's not physical or material. Um I I you know, would a membership to a jiu-jitsu gym, I don't know, would, would would that be, I don't know if that's physical or material, like, just like a free membership, hey, you could train here all day, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know, would that, would that be considered not physical or material? I, I don't know, that, that's something that'd be cool, right, to have, to have a membership to any sort of martial arts training that you don't have to pay for, you don't have to worry about that part, because... It is expensive and it's already hard, especially at my age when you have family and all kinds of stuff to be like, hey, I'm going to spend $120 a month and I'm also not going to be around for y'all because I want to do this in the evenings after work and then I want to compete as well on the weekends. And yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, trust me, it's a, it's a hard sell for anyone, especially that if you're trying to build a family and stuff to be able to sell. But if I can have that 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 freedom to just train all the time that that'd probably be it like i, I don't know if, if is, is that an option yep a membership to a martial arts any martial arts which whichever it is you know i, I grew up doing karate like and, and people think karate is not the best but hey that that was my basis and that gave a lot of people trouble when i was growing up i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying it, it, it did it really it really did because the way that they move in and out the way they kick more straight all, all that stuff gave a lot of the people that when I was fighting MMA a lot of trouble. Trust me. And it took me a long time to learn how to roll. So that's why, like, now I like to do jujitsu a lot. Especially because it's it's a little bit less uh, taxing on your brain cells sometimes. Sometimes I and now these people are getting too crazy and they get excited and they hit you and stuff. But not, like, on purpose. But mm, sometimes, you know, sometimes when they can't take losing or whatever. But... No hard feelings, but that's what I would do. The freedom to do any martial arts for a year without having to pay. That, that, that'd that be really cool. Well, thank everybody for all the questions. Again, follow on all the social medias. 
Instagram is the one I use the most is the.solutions.podcast. But again, we have this on YouTube. We have X, which is formerly known as Twitter. Twitter, right? And then um, on Facebook as well, too. I'm going to try to do a live on Facebook sometime soon. I, I, I And the only reason why I say Facebook is because it's one of the easiest platforms to go live on. Like other platforms, you need to have like 20,000 followers and stuff like that. So I might be working on live to, to answer some questions on the like, uh, like on a live stream and stuff like that. So again, um, thank everybody for listening. Thank you Ian, for tuning in and I am out. Mm-hmm.